G'day guys, welcome back to the Lotus Grind. Okay, um, well, I've got another random buy for you guys today. So, um, this one is a, was actually a local pickup, so I haven't done too many of these. Um, they don't seem to come up that much. Um, but yeah, so this one, I'll see if I've got some photos of what they advertised, but it was basically, it was on um, Gumtree, uh, and I think it was advertised, it was probably about 10 kilometers away from where I live. So I saw there was two decent tubs um, of cards. It looked like probably about, I don't know, maybe 4,000 cards, maybe more. Um, yeah, actually probably more like five or 6,000. Um, and I got there and um, the guys... There uh, was a guy, there was actually two of them, and I think they were moving. They were pretty nice, but it seemed like um, magic was a hobby they had, like, years ago. And, um, yeah, it kind of, they weren't too fussed about uh, magic now, because the cards were kind of like, uh, they're from that kind of 2000 to 2010 era. But there was some interesting stuff, and some pre-con decks, um, but the asking price, like the cards were pretty beat up. So the asking price was $500. So, um, magic has, you know, all the prices of the cards have softened lately. And I looked through, I looked through probably about, I don't know, I probably was there for about 10 minutes, kind of having a look and seeing what was there. And there was some good stuff. Like I did see some rares, um, Actually, let me kind of show you guys what, what, I, what I looked at. So, this is one of the boxes here. And this is another of the boxes there. So, these storage boxes, there's a fair amount in them. The thing that caught my eye at the start, if you guys can see that. So, in there, we've got a Scalding Tarn, original print from Zendikar. There's some other rares, but there's not there's not a normal ratio of rares. There's much lower ratio. So what I mean by that is that uh, all these are commons and uncommons, commons, uncommons, commons, uncommons. The only rares um, we established were these ones here, these little ones off to the side. I don't think they're rares actually. But yeah, so that was a way lower count than, you know, one in every 20 cards. So that was one of the reasons I was not going to pay 500 bucks for this. There were some nice cards, but the other thing that you've probably noticed is the cards aren't exactly in perfect shape. I mean, some of them are 20 years old or older, so I get that. But um, I did notice some water damage on some of the cards. So, there was that. There were some pre-con decks. Um, so that, kind of, I don't mind because I, I can flip the pre-con decks pretty quickly and I actually did um, very quickly after we, um, after I bought this. But I ended up paying for everything. I ended up paying 250 bucks. So, I know you can say that I kind of lowballed them a bit on it, but they kind of said that they just picked $500 as a bit of a, a round number. And from what I was seeing, and just the way that Magic prices are now, it was like, yeah, look, I'm not really interested in at 500 to be honest. I've overpaid for some stuff in the past, and I wasn't going to do it then. And I was pretty comfortable to just hop in my car. Um, so... Yeah, I've looked through a few of these sleeves beforehand just to get an idea of stuff, but there is nothing um, particularly exciting. So what I'm expecting this video is that you're going to hear a lot of little piano overture because I'm going to speed it up and get through a whole load of low-value cards. I know that there should be a couple of hundred bucks worth of cards in this stuff. It's just um, it looks to be a lot of low-value kind of... 99 cents to five dollar cards albeit that there are some rares and i have checked and there are some okay rares 
um, I think this was the one that I went through um, when I was there so these ones through here but let's go through that together now oh so one more thing so it was $250 that's the buy um, and then these got into my study and then I basically have just parked them off to the side with all my other random buys that I've been accumulating. Uh, except one of my old contacts, um, he reached out to me because I was actually selling another thing on a community page. I was selling an N64 bundle and he reached out to me. I was selling my old N64 and he goes, oh, I'll take, I'll take this um, and I'll take, I had advertised my N64 for 250 bucks with some games and some controls. And he goes, oh, okay, you're selling this. Well, would you take 200? And then I knew that he liked magic and I knew that he liked 60 card pre-cons um, and the older stuff. So I'll put up a, a photo of um, the, the lists of the pre-cons because I did jot them down. But I sold him like five pre-con packs for another 50 bucks just to get me back to 250 for the, the deal with him. So I can kind of say that $50 has already been achieved through selling some of the pre-con decks for this. So I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, those, those decks were not exciting at all. Like it was good that they were pre-con so he can just pick up and play them, which I think he does with his, his kids. But, um, they were, there was no valuable cards in those except for this one, which I kept. This is another pre-con. So, you know what? Let's actually just start with this. So, the reason I held on to this is because this is a Fifth Dawn Nuts and Bolts deck. Why is it so important that it's a Nuts and Bolts deck? Well, it's got things like Seed of the Synod, But more importantly, it's got this. So that, those are a couple of nice cards through there. I don't think there's anything else here of note. Conjurer's Bauble, I don't think that's a dollar anymore. Ornithopter is under a dollar, I think. Chromatic Sphere, that might be a dollar. Ancient Den, and another Seed of the Synod. Salvaging Station, I know that's, that's, that's the one station you don't want. <laughs> so there's another Sphere, another Ancient Den. Um, Lin and Bowler might be. And a skull clamp. So yeah, nuts and bolts, that's it's a boss deck list. Um it got some really valuable cards in it. So that that was good. And unlike pretty much every other card that it looks like in this box through here these ones were sleeved up and they've been cared for pretty well so yeah i think it's a complete deck list yeah so yeah um happy with that I don't know, maybe I'll try and see if I can sell off that whole one as a deck. Because there's some good value there. I do kind of like keeping decks and things together where I can. Okay. Um, let's do this. Alright guys, so I know that, you know, 
I mean, I've paid 250 bucks and then already through here, you know, you guys might say that I've been a bit too stingy with the seller on this, but seriously, just the way that magic's moving and some deals that have happened for me lately. Um, yeah, maybe they just got me on a day that I really wasn't feeling that generous. Anyway, okay. So yeah, as you can see guys, these are, these are a bit beat up. from the dark okay So there's some mirage in here, okay. Okay. Zendikar. Nature's claim, that's all right. Oh, we've got a few of them. Sweet. vegetation pretty sure that one's still something
foil, 8th edition fecundity. Always happy to pull some foils. Quest for renewal, that's probably better. That's probably a four. I'm hoping that's still four or five bucks.
All right, and then these were the rares. I think there's there was one or two decent ones. So you got Paleoloth, absolute bulk rare. Reese, the Exiled. Elvish Arch Druid. Glimpse of Nature, that was the one. Uh, but oh, and Elvish Champion in foil and Brood Slip. Okay, there were a few decent ones, but again, condition. Yeah, it's got a big douche on that one. Oh, that's right. I remember this now. <laughs> Fish champion. Chunks taken out. What do you reckon? Adds to the effect? Not really. And the brood sliver, same thing. It's like some of these went through the washing machine or something. But people still buy beat up cards. Just got to mark them down appropriately. Eyes of the Wizard. Thriss. Yarrow Bees. Thorn Elemental. Elvish Soul Tiller. Xanthrid Swarm. <laughs>
Duru Warchief, I think it's worth picking.
Outburst, that was the one I was thinking of. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I mean, that
Thorncast, yep. Beautiful, you got some Paradox Hazes or something. Colour Tethers. Oh, Muddle. Conflux. Yep, Soul Quake. We make a Mad Rush Cyclops. Finest Hour, Density Crisis, Guilt Spire Avenger, another Finest Hour, another Soul Quake, another Valley Maker, Beat Up Noble Panther, Sabretooth Nishava, Avian Mimeomancer, Tibor and Lumia, Cemetery Puka. And erase the redeemed.
Changeling. Yeah. Hey, there's a spell starter sprite, finally. Me boy changeling might be something. Steel artifacts and uncommon control magic, maybe they might both be uncommon. Drunk crab, sweet.
It's burning seas. It's a couple of bucks. Had a full one of those. Another car that I. Vara, tight spout tyrant, Quina, that's beaten to death, Lothos, Tide Maker, Mythic, Cool, Visitrix, Bulk Rare, Spawn Broker, Telemin Performance, Hoygrat Scepters, another Sinbat, Beat Up Fleeting Image, another Fleeting Air Image, Ancestral Memories, I think that's pretty good, and Sphinx of Joie Isle. So look, there is a little stack of rares. And we've got some playable stuff here. Sorry, some pickable stuff. And some foils. <laughs> 